Marty Simon sitting in for Jim Lakey over here at Sandyland Center. And our motto for Sandyland Center is people helping people and helping seniors in our community. And we just love to do that. Today is Wednesday and um, it is February the 12th. Um, terrible twos or two of a kind is one way to describe what's happening in the weather today. And over at the Weather Channel, the Winter Storm Watch uh, says a two plus week snow siege is breaking records in parts of the Northeast and promises two more potential snow showers through Valentine weekend. A powerful arctic cold front emanating from the Canadian prairies and backed by strong gusting wind brings in the two snowstorms through Thursday night and Saturday and right into Sunday. But right here in St. John, it's not quite as bad as that. We have been spared the brunt of the storm. But it is rather cloudy outside, and the sun is breaking through those clouds. But it's a, it's a brisk 36 degrees. And that pattern will continue, um, that briskness in the air, and bringing our high only to 45 today, with the breeze coming in from the north at 11 to 21 miles per hour. Tomorrow it should be about the same, mostly sunny, with the highs near at 41. And the wind coming in from the east uh, at 8 to 11 miles per hour and becoming southerly in the afternoon. Tomorrow night, Thursday night, it will be partly cloudy with a low around 30 degrees of the south wind at 8 to 11 miles per hour becoming northwest after midnight. Tonight though the, um, the temperature will only be at 21 degrees Fahrenheit. On Friday coming into the weekend it will be mostly sunny with the high near 58. Friday night it will be mostly clear with the low near 32. And Saturday it will be mostly sunny with the high near 50. Saturday night Partly cloudy with a low at 17 degrees. And sunny, it would be mostly sunny with a high near 38. And Sunday night, it would be partly cloudy with a low around 24. So we have um, some warm weather on Saturday, especially, but it still will remain rather cool. Do you want to banish the blues? then eat canned fish. If you find yourself feeling crabbier and down in the dumps during the winter months, you are not alone. Lack of sunlight in the winter is linked to a decreased levels of the get happy, we like to say, the get happy brain chemical serotonin. And fortunately you don't have to wait for the sun to feel sunny. You just have to eat more foods containing omega-3 fatty acids. And canned fish such as salmon, tuna, and sardines are a good example, plus they are good protein sources. As reported by the Nutrition Journal um, recently, the fatty acids in these fish lessen the inflammation of the brain that triggers the blues and irritate irritation or the irritability that you sometimes feel in the um, winter months because you tend to stay more inside. Omega-3s can also help lower the risk of heart disease and fish is the top source of omega-3 fatty acids. Other fish such as mackerel and oysters are a good source of omega-3. Many foods are fortified with omega-3, eggs, margarine, milk, juices, and yogurt. Whole foods such as seeds and nuts and oils such as canola, cod liver oil, flax, and 
fast seed and walnut also contain omega-3s. Research also shows that omega-3 fatty acids may help babies um, brain develop. And you know, some babies can um, suffer from lack of thriving, and that might be a good way to help babies um, to have that um, syndrome to feed them some omega-3. So you will find them in some cereals and baby foods, baby formulas, infant formulas. So maybe let's stop these foods that um, reg and eat them regularly to keep the information in check and make yourself feel more upbeat and uh, agreeable by eating canned fish and these type of foods in the winter. Keep the rules away and be happy. Book your calendars. Um, today we have over at um, the First United Methodist Church, they're having something. And we want to invite you to that um, bean feed. Ham and bean feed at the First United Methodist Church in St. John. They will be serving the supper between 5 and 7 p.m. And the suggested donation is $6 for adults and $3 for children. And they will also have coffee and um, desserts. Tomorrow, um, Thursday, at there's something cooking in Cardinal, Kansas, and the senior center bus will leave um, the recreational center right at 10.30 in the morning. And after lunch, they stop at Walmart or simply Southwest for a shopping trip. And they think they will arrive back in St. John at 3, three o'clock. And on Sunday, again, they will have uh, a trip to the Wichita Thunder Game. The St. John Hudson Recreation Commission is sponsoring a bus trip to watch the Wichita Thunder take on the Allen American Hockey Game on Sunday, February the 15th. Uh, this is a good time because there's no school on Monday. And the cost for that trip is only $8 per person, and that includes um, the transportation and the admission to the, to the game. So that sounds like a good deal. Today, though, is the last day to make your reservations for that trip. So call over at the uh, center, the recreational center, for both of those events. And then you're also invited to a uh, Tea on Monday the 16th at 2 p.m. at the Sunflower Senior Center, and it's their um, Valentine tea, their Valentine tea, and they will have a Valentine bingo that sounds interesting and delicious cookies and, and cake. And on Friday, um, the 20th, um, it's going to be a woman's fair at the Wichita um, Century Two um, Theater. And bus will leave St. John at 9.30 a.m. At the, from the Wit Center and the soup at, stop at the Dutch Kitchen for the coffee. And the fair opens right at 12 o'clock and they leave the fair at 4.30. So that promises to be quite an outing. And the fee for that is $15 and um, the fair fee and the travel to and back from there. Mark your calendars too for birthdays and we want to wish uh, Larry Garner, Larry's birthday today, happy birthday Larry, and tomorrow, Thursday, it will be Cherry Kanoka's birthday, and on Friday, um, it will be Christy Snyder's and Melissa Davies, and on Saturday, it's Alan Long, and on Sunday, he's a Jordan. So quite a few um, birthdays. Don't forget to send them a card. Give them a call. And we want to wish happy anniversary to Virgil uh, and Joan Young on the 14th. Um, that's a good day to celebrate. Valentine's Day. That must have been lovely. They got married on Valentine's Day. And on the 15th, is. 
Carl and Nikki Bear. And this is important. You are invited to come and celebrate uh, a century of life with Lloyd Ratz, who is turning 100 on Sunday, February the 15th, from 2 to 5 at the, um, the lodge at 700 East 1st. So please, please, that is, when anyone can reach a century, that is an accomplishment. And this gentleman, I've spoken to him, and he's so interesting to talk to. So please come and celebrate with him. And along with that, we have, um, I like to talk about somebody in, in our community, and today it's James Hood. He sent us a letter that I want to read for you. And Mr. Hood says, on Thursday, February the 5th, the St. John Science Museum was host to 20 Lyman students from the Pratt Community College. The museum distinguish, distinguishes itself by numerous displays that provide an understanding of electrical power production and distribution. The Science Museum has been the fulfillment of a desire to have a place to work on projects as a hobby and was purchased by funds obtained by teaching outreach classes in chemistry at Barton College and physics classes at our local school. It is my hope that this institution can be maintained as a benefit for the community. And I know several of you know um, Mr. Hood. He was the physics teacher at the school here for lots of years and many students have benefited from his teaching. So if you see Mr. Hood, um, go visit him over at the museum. He's always willing to have somebody come over and talk with them. And along that lines, if you have anything that you want us to talk about on the news hour, please do send us a note or come over and we can interview you and have you um, give your information to the community. We'd just love to do that. And mark your calendars too for the luncheon um, menus over at the Maxwell um, Center. Today they are serving uh, beef and beans and a California blend of vegetables with bread and an apple crisp. Uh, tomorrow they'll be serving up ro roast pork, sweet potatoes and green beans with strawberries and pears. I get hungry just reading these um, menus sometimes. And on Friday they're serving up chicken and noodles, mashed potatoes, capri vegetables, and pineapple for dessert. Over at the Sunflower Center, today they're serving up turkey with dressing, turkey gravy, sweet potatoes, and butterscotch pie for dessert, and apple sauce if you so wish, and vegetable soup on Thursday with um, chicken salad, and a cinnamon roll, and on Friday they'll be serving up uh, her baked chicken and baked potatoes, cooked cabbage, and a cherry cobbler. And please, please, um, these lunches are available to you if you're 60 or over, uh, or if you're shut in, and they'd be happy to provide you a warm uh, meal in the middle of the day if you just give them a call and arrange that. And for a thought for the day, for our health, according to a prominent Duke University researcher, if thankfulness were a drug, it would be the world's best-selling product with health benefits for each and every major organ system. Cicero said, Gratitude is our natural response to God's grace. Nothing so takes the heart off of, out of a person as ingratitude. Gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but is the parent of all the others. So, for our better heart health, 
Give thanks to God and others for everything all the time. Thank you and have a good afternoon. This is your story. This is your story. This is your story. This is my story. This is my story. This is my story. But most of all, this is the greatest story ever told. This is God's story. This is God's story. This is God's story. I know you're going to enjoy the incredible journey you're about to embark on. The story is brimming over with tales of mystery, intrigue, adventure, of love, heartbreak, and triumph, of power, of struggle, and finally, of redemption. But remember, the Bible is not a hundred ancient, unrelated paintings, but a mural all knitted together to tell the story of God's great love for us and the extent to which He will go to get us back. I know you're really going to enjoy and appreciate this wonderful experience as you fully explore how we all fit into the greatest story ever told, God's story. This is God's story. This is God's story. This is God's story. I'm Ray Davidson, pastor of First Southern Baptist Church here in St. John on the corner of Second and Exchange. We would like to invite you to come and join with us as we look at God's story, the story of God's interaction with man. We'll begin on September the 7th at 9.30 a.m. with a 9.30 a.m. with a worship service followed by at 10.30 with Sunday school. This is a study for everyone in the family. All of the children, young people, adults will be studying the same lesson so that we can talk about it at home as we go through the week. We invite you again to come and join us on this 31-week study of God's story and man's story.